a matter of tradition, like now handed down, father to son, your grandfathers, all this like, it was a matter of, a matter of pride really, it was Stevie Dawes. My family, my dad was in the uh, same gang with me, my uncle was a gang. Well, I think it's because they all grew up together, all those dockers. They was all local chaps, all their fathers and uncles and all that had been in it, because you could only get in the dock if you had family already in there. So, of course, uh, we had uh, fathers of some relationships. I think one of the greatest privileges that I had was being able to work with, with my dad. Brothers were there, you know. It was great. Because um, it was a, a way of life. My father had been one, my father's father, throughout history, on both sides, my wife's family and my family, had all been dockers. From family, um, uncle, dad, my uncle was a Stevie Doll. Uh, sorry, my dad was a Stevie Doll, my uncle was a lighterman. Grandfather worked in the docks, um, uncles, most of the family worked in and around the docks. And I suppose every friend I've ever known always originally started somewhere in the dock. Either their dad was in it or they was in it. You tried to keep fit in the docks because if you were fit, you worked easy. If you were not fit, you worked hard. But you weren't fucking hard, mate. You know, you got nothing for nothing in there. They used to run from the ship on uh, plank on plank and had the, the timber on their back and run with it, advance with the with the balls, you know? We ran cement cementing. Couldn't, couldn't have what they call light enders then. We ran underweight bags, running them all day. Japanese boats in there. There was no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let us go on board. We thought I thought I'd wear a board. All right. We was all countenance to an old knuckle. But we knew that this was going to be a, a, a fight up the gangway. And, and you had a fight, you had a fight. Dim, dim, your hook. Your hook, your coat, you know, your legs, the old S hook, like, you know. It was always in your belt, so if they got out swords, scimitars, or, or whatever they wanted to get out, you get your cargo all past. All right, come on, let's have you. Yeah, fucking Chinese, fucking poor sons, mate, you know. And you'd carry cement all day long, red hot straight from the mitt, the kilns. You'd come down by a barge, and you'd have four men in the barge, loading the nets, and it'd come down the ship's hole, and you'd be running it in from here, say, 100 yards away, you know? And uh, you'd stack it up all day long, for weeks on end, for two weeks on end, on end, cement, cement, cement. My old father died, he was worn out. You were still only getting a pittance, but it was a fair pittance. You, you went to work for that, and you, you got that. You never knew, you, uh, we never knew our, our fathers as young men. They all look fucking old, of course they didn't. Poor old bastards, all gas in the, in the first old fucking woman. Never make that opinion. I, I always love my I always love my job. Tremendously happy. Quality of people, mate. Quality of people. Yeah, and it was the happiest days of my life. Unbelievable. And it, it was so warm and friendly. Freezing cold, frost all over the place. But you just, you, that never touched you. It was, nobody was cold. They was all sort of laughing and joking. And of course the pubs opened at six in the mornings. And some of the harder drinkers used to be in the pub early for their pints to stop themselves shaking, you know. The greatest characters you've ever met in the docks. He loved it. Mm. Yeah. I, I, he, he loved every minute of it. I think when the, the docks was thriving, yeah, I think he really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, uh, I had a myriad times of happiness and I, I cannot visualise myself without my life, without the dogs.
without the dogs. Happy days, full of sweat and smoke and good people. That was the art of the situation where people like your dad and me lined up to do these things to get your boys, our boys in, our boys, the best in the world. Stood out in the picket line together. Well, let's start together. You know what I mean? Come out of the principal and stay there. Like, I ain't going to leg you over. I ain't going to do you down. I ain't going to talk behind your back. These are genuine, but best people on God put breath in, in my opinion. Dogs and Stevie Dawes. I mean, some weeks you'd have nothing, and you'd go in and, and, and someone would buy you a drink, and you'd say, no, 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 I can't put it back, and I'd say, leave it out. And the next week you'd go in there, you'd put in one, and he might be in the same boat. And that was the closeness. People looked, did look out for each other, and did help each other, and everyone was sort of in the same situation. A lot of the families down here was worked in the docks. Um, so that, that they was all sort of in the same situation as each other and all looked out for each other. We become an insular society because nobody give a fuck about us. The papers run us down, we was always on strike, lazy bastards, this and that. <laughs> That's all we ever done with it, can't strike and hold the country around small this time. We, we, uh, we went out about dangerous ships, we went on strike with dangerous ships, not Dosh. And I think they felt very, they really identified with this area. They. They loved it, and they were insular. They didn't. They didn't really welcome outsiders. You know, unless, you, unless your father had worked on the docks, you weren't welcome. You know, it wasn't a matter of being around here for 10, 20 years. You know, they looked to see whether your family had been around here, and their families had, had married together, and so on like that. And it completely changed now. I, I can't. I can't describe it by, by virtue of the fact that there was no one that ever would, would ever do you if you were they would never, ever do your thing. They would never do Charlie Kelly. A painter. They are the greatest people in the world. And they tell me the truth. Charlie, we never saw him. Twelve men, I said, oh. twelve men said, and I swear their life away, no, what they said is true. That's the police. Pe people with crowns up there and all that and try, try to bamboozle you. If, if, if you want, when I say bamboozle you, you ain't getting away with that, son. Son, I've got a fucking boy older than you. I've got a bike older than you and all that silly gun. <laughs> got a bike older than you. <laughs> I always used to say that and I've had a bike older than them. Look. That is true. At that time, uh, was rife with rumour, and uh, so I put it to pen. The rumour. It's rumoured. There's a rumour or so I've heard say, there's going to be an offer, and it's coming any day. Now the rumour is a strong one. It's got a pack of sauce. It came from old Ben Thingy, and he should know, of course, because he's a friend of you-know-who, who often hears the news. It's come straight from the horse's mouth when he's out on the booze. Of course, the union knows of it, though the secret it will not tell. But then did they let the rumour go, so we all know as well. It's not good for Docker's nerves, you know, when severance is on the way. It starts his old heart pumping. Is it time to call it a day? Basically, uh, we got stabbed in the back twice. Oh, definitely the government, yeah. Her name didn't come down too well, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Maggie Thatcher. Under Thatcher who put us out, all the uh, trade unions, as we know now, she, she made a campaign against all trade unionists. She done a, more damage in this country, to me, than that old Fitler did. 
and he was dropping bombs all over the place. And she done more damage, in my opinion, and people are still not over it. People lost businesses. She encouraged people to buy their own council houses and, and places and flats. They put all their savings in, all their severance pay and their savings into buying their places. And then she put them out of work. Containerisation, packaging, bigger ships, and practically another uh, item I think was property values. The docks were worth a hell of a lot of money. The land values, like Canary Wharf, Surrey Docks, West Indy. All that. So really, I mean, the container revolution just flattened it. I, that was the real reason, I believe. I can't blame the employers totally, and, and I can't blame the government for allowing it to happen, because it didn't just destroy the docks, it destroyed the, the area around the docks. <laughs> it's the docks getting closed through, what's the name? It closed because the, the, the property was worth more than we was, wasn't it? Sick. Absolutely sick. My whole, it's my whole life. My whole life. Good pal, I know I was going to be lose good people. And uh, it was a social side of it. Not only the working side of it. Not only working with good men, which you, you, you've got to appreciate. You work with good blokes. And you think a lot of. And all the science come to an end. All your life's come to an end. That's all I ever knew. From when I was like 14, 15, I was in the docks. And something that's coming in, I was absolutely sick. I mean, like, 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 I felt empty. Oh, gutted. Absolutely gutted. Why? Well, he always said there'd never be another place to work like there was in the dock. Meaning, men didn't stick by one another like they did in the dock. They all looked out for one another. I came home and my lip began to swell. And it's, it was, it, I have to react. It just swelled out. My wife sent for the doctor. Devastation, you know, just absolutely uh, like someone pulling the eye out of you. He, uh, he was always a very irate, a nervous person. I played football with him a lot, and uh, he threw himself under the train. He threw himself under the tube, so he just could not. I used to see him as I walked through the blue, and he used to more or less cry to me about how much he missed it. He loved the dogs, he loved his mates, he loved his beer, and he's, he's such a, he was involved in that. Don't mean Dennis, and I don't think he could handle it, handle coming out. It was only, I suppose, about a year or two after he was out of the docks, his wife came home from work one afternoon, and he was hanging from the banisters, the young himself. And uh, that, was a, that was a real tragedy, because he was a character, he was one of the characters that you had in the docks and loved it, that's all he knew. Probably people have made a fortune out of Doc Lands. It's all like corruption. You know, you talk about gangsters. I've got to tell you that some of the biggest gangsters are the royal, uh, you know, the, um, the right honourables. There's more housing, but a lot of the housing is, it's out of the price range of the local people. If you move, they'll build where you was just standing. They took all our jobs away to shut down, to build, build my homes that no one can't afford to pay for. People live there now, not Bermondsey people. They've got nice riverside flats, wouldn't be seen dead down years ago. Got no time for us, they've had no time for us. That's it. I work, I'm always working in the docks and I, I wake up in the morning and I've just unloaded a boat, I've just met people who, who I haven't seen for years, you know. Well, you're lost, aren't you? You know, you had nothing. All finished, you, you've had it. You lose all your mates. Forever. That means it's the best 15 years of my life. Oh no, I, I would only say, in my life, my life must have been made for the dogs because I became someone 
Yeah, I used to love to get up and go to work of a morning. I just come here like right, in these jobs, but this is just boiling time to get me pension, really. I never left the docks. I'm still waiting for the next ship to come in me, up here. I'm still waiting for the next ship. I was too kid myself, I'm still in there. Do you know what I mean? I just regret the closing of it. Of the docks, I'm, I've... The people I worked with was the finest people I knew. I never met better people. And uh, that's about all I say. It's gone, and I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. That's about what I say, my lord. Yeah. I wish I'd live again. Yeah. I'll go back. I'll, I'll live it again. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, all them days are gone.